you guys welcome back to my channel so today I am doing my November favorites oh man you know November we're already hitting the end of the year I didn't really do too many Friday favorites this year because I was using a lot of the same stuff uh, consecutively every week so I turned into my Friday favorites ended up turning into my monthly favorites and I continued on my monthly favorites for this year and I think that it's just a better way of showing you what I've really loved in that month because it gives me enough time to see how many times in the month that I use it and usually if I'm consistent with the product I know that I'm really enjoying it especially because when I don't like a product I know I'll stop using it and I will either give it away to someone or chuck it out depending on how old it is so um, you know monthly favorites are probably my next best or my next favorite video to film aside from empties and I love watching favorites as well my top video to watch and film are empties videos I don't know what it is but the whole satisfaction of finishing a product from start to end is just so satisfying like this video if you know what I'm talking about just it's just there's this gratification inside of you that you're just like ah, another product is done I know I might sound crazy but for those of you who are beauty lovers like me you know what I'm talking about Okay, so I'm going to dive in. Um, I have all kinds of products from makeup to skincare to body care uh, to tools. So I'm just going to pick randomly and show you guys. Um, I'm not going to do it in any particular order and I'm not going to categorize things because let's just face it, I'm not about categorizing even like my video like that. I just, I couldn't care less. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Anyways. Um, okay, so I want to talk about some tools. So I know, I know. Everybody and their mother talks about Morphe, but let me tell you, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I do not have an affiliation code. I spent my hard-earned money on these puppies myself. Um, this is the RO, the Morphe RO, and this is the R2. Um, the RO, I, I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait, no, I this one was, uh, was given separately. The R2, I believe, was included in the... Um, Jaclyn Hill Favorites bundle. I did purchase the Jaclyn Hill Favorites bundle with the snakeskin case back in like early summer. Um, but these two are my favorite brushes for complexion because this big honking thing is great to powder my face with to set my foundation. This buddy here, which is the R2, is great for bronzing the skin and doing a very blown out contour. I find that these two have upped my makeup complexion game by like 100% because they have just applied whatever product on my skin so nicely, blends so much easily. I take less time having to do it. Um, the bristles are so soft and washing them is just so easy to do. I have not had any problems with them um, shedding. Um, I find that the Morphe brushes that I do own have a pretty good uh, solid um, uh, seal at, um, in the barrel. Uh, when I wash my brushes, I always make sure I wash them facing downwards so the water will drain downwards instead of the water getting stuck in the barrel. That's just a tip if you guys don't know. Um, try to wash your brushes downwards and rinse them downwards so that the water doesn't sit in the barrel and loosen up the glue and you won't have shedding issues. Um, these are thumbs up in my book. They are worth the price. In, in in Canada, you do have to spend a little bit more with customs because Morphe, you get tagged customs like... Like, there's no joke in customs when it comes to Morphe being shipped to Canada. But if you, um, if you do it through, if you do it through Ulta, it's easier to pay your customs up front. That way, when it does arrive to your door, you don't have to worry about paying your courier any custom fees. Um, and I believe, I'm pretty sure Ulta does carry Morphe now because it, it was everywhere um, on social media. But anyways, these are great. Um, what I suggest is if you want to buy from Morphe, but you just want to buy one brush, my advice to you is maybe wait wait until you have a larger order that way you get free shipping and even though you have to pay customs it's worth your custom fee if you buy in a, in a like bigger order because then you're not having to spend an arm and a leg on customs as well and shipping um, if you're if you're only buying under the the under the free shipping limit so that's just my opinion um, but I've had these on my list my wish list for a couple years and I'm so glad that I did pick them up they have been great they have been a favorite they've been on, an ongoing favorite for months but I haven't really shown you guys tools lately and I wanted to just kind of point those out um, brow I only have one brow product this is the Cabrow by Benefit I got this for free from Influencer for review love this baby OMG I am not a fan of the Benefit uh, definer 
the brow definer is that what it's called or gimme brow or something like that I don't know um it's the it's the triangular pencil that fills in your brows I'm actually wearing that today um on my brows and I'm not a fan of it I love this one because it is a dryer formula pomade the brush is very easy to use and it's easy to manipulate the, the product because it's drier so you have more control gives you some banging bold brows that look phenomenal in pictures when you're doing a really big glam day this is amazing. I will bring this with me to travel next year because this is all I need plus brow gel. That's all I need. So thumbs up benefit Cabrow. Um, okay, let's talk about, let's talk about some nails. So on my nails, I have been reapplying this nail polish. This is the China Glaze polish in Dress Me Up. It is a gorgeous nudie brownie mauve, perfect for winter time, I find. Um, it's actually similar to the lip gloss I'm wearing which I will get to in a minute. Um, I love this particular shade for this time of year because it's so, um, the undertones are a bit on the cooler side, but they do have a slight warmth to it, but it's just so, I don't know, fall winter esque that it makes me think of like sweaters. I don't know why it's just, I don't know. Um, I am like down to here, so I have been using it quite a bit. I have been, you know, making a dent in this and I probably will see myself finishing the bottle before, um, before or by Christmas because I just love this color. I've been loving it for my nails. I just, something simple, something to make me look put together. Thumbs up for China Glaze. Um, another thing I want to share with you guys is my uh, lip mask for the night. Um, I, you know, it's been getting really cold. Well, I mean, it's been getting cold at night here in Canada. So I'm really finding that my lips are starting to get more chapped, more cracked. Um, and I know it's been one of those things where I can't stand the feeling. Um, so I finally cracked open my Vaseline Lip Fit Therapy Cocoa Butter. Um, it's just Vaseline really that smells like cocoa butter. This is amazing at nighttime. I slathered this all over my lips before bed. I wake up the next morning and my lips are plump and they are not cracky and they're not like feeling gross or flaky. This is so good and it's so affordable. You don't really need to go buy an expensive lip mask for nighttime if you don't or you, you don't want to spend the money or you can't spend the money. This is a great drugstore option and it is affordable. So love that. I do have a backup of that, by the way, because it is one of my favorites. Although I've noticed in the drugstore recently that that packaging has changed into a tin, into a tin form. So I'm kind of on the fence. We'll see how that goes. I kind of like this packaging better. I'm not really a fan of like tins because like your hands can slip and slide. I don't know. That's just me, but we will, we will see. We will see. Okay. So <clears throat> now, um, I have two mascaras I want to talk about. This has been an oldie but a goodie. This is the Colossal Express Cat Eye um, Mascara. This is in the shade Black. And because it's got that arched wand with the like natural hair bristles, I love how this feathers out my lashes. This is one of my favorites. It's been an oldie. Um, I've liked this in previous years. Even when I first started my channel four years ago. Four years ago, has it been? I think it has. Um, I've I've liked this so uh, I went back to it. I do love it. I do enjoy it It's great for no makeup makeup days as well as layering for glam days. So thumbs up for this This one is the L'Oreal Voluminous lash paradise in waterproof. So I mean, okay This is funny because I love this but I hate this at the same time. This is so weird So I love the brush don't get me wrong like the bristles are one of those like um, natural bristle hair type of deal kind of similar to the better than sex mascara from Too Faced um, the formulation is a little too wet for me on this, and I find that it gets really flaky and chunky. So I'm wondering if the non-waterproof version is different. Um, I like how it applies in my lashes. I love how it gives me volume and length, but it doesn't give me enough length that I want. I find that once it gets to a certain point, the length kind of stops. So I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I love it, but you got to give me a little more length. You know, the volume wise, it's great. For coating the lashes, like, you know, thick and volume, that's so great. But lengthwise, it's a little, you have to, like, work at it a little more. The problem is when you work at it too much, they start to look a little more clumpier, which kind of sucks. So it's kind of like a love-hate relationship with this. I am yet to try the non-waterproof version to see if that will work any better. So we'll see how that goes. But, um, you know, it is not a bad product. I just find that with this one, to keep in mind, too, is that it takes a lot to take it off at night. I have to use an oil-based makeup remover for to take this off because it's waterproof and this crap ain't not coming up off your eyelashes unless you actually use an oil-based makeup remover. Um, but again, you know, it's it's affordable drugstore, so I mean, 
you know, it's one of those things. If you can't afford the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced, then maybe offer one of these instead. Um, I do like it. I just wish it would give me a little more volume. Sorry, length. It gives me volume. I wish it would give me more length. I'm mixing up the two. My God. Um, okay, so I have two lip products. Um, I haven't, you know, it's funny. I've been using lipsticks, like, you know, switching out lip, liquid lipsticks, like they're coming out of style. So, um, you know, sometimes I use Kylie Cosmetics, sometimes I'll use Tarte, sometimes I'll use um, MAC, like actual bullet sticks. Sometimes I'll even use um, my Bite Beauty Honeycomb. Sometimes I'll even use my Satin Dose of Colors lipsticks. I'm, I'm changing them out all the time because I change up my look. But the one thing that stays consistent are my glosses. I don't have as many glosses as I once did, and I did declutter a couple from ColourPop in my empties video for November, but these two I have been adoring. So I'm wearing one today. This is um, <clears throat> Marc Jacobs. This is in the shade Skin Deep, and <clears throat> that's what it looks like, and that's what it looks like on my lips. So um, this is such a gorgeous color. I just love it. It's so neutral. Kind of reminds me of my nail polish a little bit because it's got like this this like deep maroony not even maroony but like beigey darky beige undertone to it it's just so pretty um i have to say that this has probably been the one that i consistently go back to all the time um then there is my becca liquid crystal topper glow gloss um this one is in champagne dream if i'm not mistaken does it even say nope um oh here it is champagne dream uh, times Bellini. So it kind of, it's got this like shimmery, um, shift to it. I will give you guys a swatcheroo. It's like a nude, but it's like a champagne-y shade. And then it's got like a pink shift. It's so pretty. Um, so I like to put this one typically on top of like nude, uh, lipsticks only because by itself, it's quite sheer. And I'm not a fan of my natural lip color on it, on its own with this on top. I don't know why. I mean, if I'm in a rush, sometimes I'll just throw this on or I'll throw it on top of a lip liner, but I usually use it on top of a lip liner or lip or lipstick. I usually don't use this on its own, but it's so pretty, especially in the sun. Um, I think that I might save this one for next year so I can bring it with me to Jamaica because the way the sun would shine on these like, s like flex is unreal. Um, okay. So what else? What else can I show you guys? I don't even know where to begin. This is, this is gonna be a long video, so please make sure you get a snack. Um, I have a couple, of, I have a few palettes. I have, I have four palettes to show you, so I'm gonna just dive right in. Um, I did use my Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette this month a couple of times, and I do enjoy the palette, I must say. Some people might think that, oh, you know, Huda and her expensive palettes. Listen, I get it. I did not purchase her rose gold one for a good reason. If you want to know why, check out my Auntie haul. I think it's the first Auntie haul I did. Um, it'll tell you why. But I found that she really upped her packaging. She included a mirror in this one. Um, the colors are very different than what I have in average palettes. Um, you know, in my warm tone palettes, I don't have a lot of like these purpley shades. So, you know, I kind of, I kind of like, you know, I just my heart ached when I saw this and that's what happens when you're a beauty junkie your heart has to ache in order for you to want to buy something um well that's just me anyways I maybe not everyone's heart aches the way mine does but I'm, I'm quite particular on products that I, I make purchases on especially that are so expensive I really think about it I really you know take the time to really see do I really want it or am I going to forget about it you know two days from now so you know this one actually hit home for me when it did release and when I did pick it up I did love it I love the shades I love the colors the way the color uh, combinations looked on my eyes looks so exotic it looks so cool if you want something different this is a good one it's $85 Canadian, but it's cheaper than a Natasha Denona palette, which I don't think, I really don't think you need to spend that much money on eyeshadow uh, when it comes to Natasha Denona, only because I don't think I've ever seen anyone really hit pan on, on a palette, unless you were actually forcing yourself to use up an entire palette, like pan that palette type of deal. Um, and I just don't want to live life like that. Like, you know, I don't want to have to live life into forcing myself to, to pan a whole palette if I really am not feeling it. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I will never foresee myself finishing an entire palette, I'll tell you that. But, you know, the colors in here are phenomenal. They're so different. There's all kinds of different, um, mattes and shimmers to do really cool, um, easy and more complex, complex looks. Now, 
disclaimer the next two palettes i'm going to show you are in also in the warm tone family i'm sorry i gravitate toward warm tones and i feel like that's just what looks good on my skin tone because i do have an olive undertone now if you guys can't afford the huda beauty one i would possibly recommend the lorac unzipped desert sun palette sunset palette sorry um the packaging is flimsy like there's no mirror so it's kind of shitty on that end but it comes with similar shades so um i think this was like 40 dollars or 38 bucks or something so if you don't want to spend the 85 on this you could get the lorac unzipped desert sunset same color idea different shadows same color family type of deal um i the only thing i don't like about this palette is that it doesn't come with a mirror that's my only complaint um they are typical buttery creamy lorac shadows you know there's a bit of kick up because it's so creamy um but they are gorgeous shades and when i use this look i get i when I use this palette i get compliments too along with the huda beauty one so if you don't want to go with the huda beauty because of the price this one is kind of less shadows less shadow selection no mirror a little bit cheaper though around 38 bucks or so um so i mean totally up to you and what you are looking for but this is a good one as well i just don't, i wish they had a mirror in this one so that one i have been enjoying as well now this one is fairly new to my collection uh, about a week and a half ago i received it in the mail a week and a half maybe two weeks ago so middle of the month um, but i've been using it since i got it in the mail and i know people are complaining i'm actually wearing it today um, i know people are complaining about it but i just i can't I, I, it's got to be part of a collection. I have the first tartlet, I have the tartlet in bloom, so I had to complete my collection. That's just how I am. And you know what? I use and abuse my tartlet in bloom palette. So I foresee that I will be using and abusing my tartlet toasted because this is right up my alley in warm tones. This is great for every day. Um, I am so excited for this. Now I have to say there is a very big amount of kick up that comes out of this, but the, the shadows are so creamy and buttery that that's why there is kick up to the, uh, to the mats especially. Um, but I don't mind that. I'm actually okay with that. I think that they blend so well that kick up, you're going to get kick up with any type of eyeshadow that is matte because usually matte shadows are more, um, dusty feel, I guess you could say. Uh, so, you know, even if they're creamy or not creamy, there's always going to be that extra, you know, dustiness that comes off your brush, which I really don't mind. So, um, this one has been a great one. I, I find that the, this one is more for easy looks. So if you don't want to go all extravagant with like Huda Beauty and the Lorac Unzip Desert Sunset, um, this one's more for like easy looks, all one color type of looks, a little bit of shimmer on the tops of your lids there and some liner and you know mascara and you're good to go this one i find is probably more of a no nonsense type of palette where you don't have to think about it this palette you don't have to think about whereas the other ones you might have to think about a little bit more in your look this one is more easy and user friendly um but i do love this one just the same and i don't know i just it is a favorite of mine i will continue to use it into the holiday season um and finally my last travel palette that i want to show you guys is my naked basics I don't know anybody who talks about this little guy anymore, but I have been using him when I do go away on the weekends. This is the one I bring only because he's so compact and easy to travel with. Um, as much as I want to, like as much as I could travel with these guys, um, I would travel with the Huda Beauty one and possibly the Lorac one, but I don't travel with the Lorac, the Lorac, the Lorac one because there's no mirror. And the Huda Beauty one... Um, I haven't traveled with yet because I haven't really done a purple-ish-esque eye when I've been away. Um, but the Tartlet one, I find that because they're so buttery and creamy, I'm scared that they're going to break in, like, in my bag. So I'm very careful with that. I have yet to travel with it, but I will let you know my thoughts when I do because I will be taking it away with me on a weekender. So we will see about that. But this one, in November, I have been taking with me on weekenders. I just find that, you know, they're neutral colors. I can do day, I can do night. Um, it's got a mirror, so I can use it to apply my makeup with. Um, it's compact, and you can't go wrong with warm tone neutrals, like really. Anybody that has a warm undertone can definitely do any type of look that they want with these colors. And then all you got to do is take like a single shadow that's shimmery, take it with you, and you're good to go for a fans-esque, fans-esque, esque That's a new word. I think I'm just making up words randomly. Um, this is a thumbs up as well, so I have been loving this too. If you guys don't have the Naked Basics, definitely look into it because I find that like if you don't want any of the fancy palettes, at least the Naked Basics you'll definitely get enough use out of that will be worth it to you because... 
you know, they're all neutralized colors. You'll definitely be able to use on an everyday basis, no matter what the occasion. So thumbs up for Naked Basics by Urban Decay. Um, okay, so I want to talk foundations and concealer. So my concealer of the month has been my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I am wearing it today. Um, I'm filming at nighttime, you guys, so you're going to see shadows on my face, unfortunately, just because... I am in no mood to have a light flashing on my face right now. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I just, I'm not in the mood. Um, and it hurts my head. I do, I do suffer from vertigo, so I try to stay away from, like, lights, like, flashing right into my eyes. Anyways, the NARS Creamy Concealer is great. I am in the shade, oh, this is ginger. Medium to ginger. I thought this was custard. Well, that's interesting. Um, so... This one is ginger. I, you know, I have been using it and, you know, it does match my skin. I'm not going to lie, but I repurchased this Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Custard. So I'm wondering if it'll be a little too light for me. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see. Um, this is a great formula. I love that it's creamy. It's easy to blend. It does even out this, uh, my dark circles. Um, I, I will be definitely scraping, uh, scraping this particular jar and taking out the stopper when it comes time because, um, this is an expensive concealer. I, I have no words. Like, this is like a $40 concealer, and you only get how much? I can't even tell. 0.22 ounces, which is not much at all. Um, so, I mean, it is a pricey concealer, but it does work well. And I find that because it's creamy, when it's wintertime, it gives a little an extra hydration under the eye, so your skin doesn't look crepey or dry underneath there. So, love this. Um, I did use it in the summer and the winter, like close to the end of the summer into the fall time. So like, it, you know, now that it's cool, I find that it does work better under my eyes because it's giving a little more life to my under eye area for uh, lack of dryness that's there. So love this would repurchase. It is expensive and pricey, but I have to say it's, it, the, the hype with that one is real. I, I can see why it's real to a lot of people. So, um, foundations, you guys, I get so many compliments when I wear this foundation. I'm not wearing it today cause I'm, I'm wearing a foundation and testing a foundation today. Um, but this is my everyday foundation that I'm actually going to show you. It's a cocktail of a drugstore foundation. And when people tell me, what am I wearing? You look like you have flawless skin. Oh my God, you have full coverage. Like, is it expensive? I'm like, to be honest, it's a drugstore foundation. And when people like hear me say that, they're like, really? It's, it's kind of funny how people react. So, um, the L'Oreal Pro Matte and Pro Glow, I mix them together and I get a beautiful satin finish for the winter time. And that's what I do. I find that the Pro Matte is great for me in the summer alone. I will use this alone in the summer, but the Pro Glow is too glowy for me in the winter. So what I do is I add a bit of the matte to kind of even it out and it gives me a, an amazing satiny finish that doesn't make me too, um, glowy. So these two combined are definitely heaven for my skin in the winter time. And I have been loving this. So if you guys, you know, the hype is real when it comes to the infallible pro mattes and glow foundations. Go check them out at your drugstore. Um, I'm sure that they, they go on sale too periodically, so keep an eye for that. Okay, we're plowing through, guys. I'm sorry. I know this is a long video. Um, the blush that I have been rocking for uh, November is, has been Cinnamon by NYX. I think this was in my October favorites as well. I just find that this blush is so versatile. It's like, a, it's like an orangey shade, but it's not very... Um, like, it's pigmented on your finger. But when you like rub it into the skin, it's not very um, clown-esque. So it's really easy to use on the cheeks to give you that perfect like orangey-ish flush without looking like a clown. So I have been loving this for the, the second month in a row and thumbs up because, you know, NYX blushes are great. Especially you don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money for blush because I'm not really a blush person. Um, I, I, I like the drugstore options just because they, they do the job for me and they work well and you don't have to go and break the bank. So, excuse me, you guys, I have hiccups. Um, so there, there's that. Thumbs up for NYX blushes. Now, I have, um, two highlighters that I want to talk to you about. This is the Ofra highlighter in Rodeo Drive. I have been rocking this for, uh, a good portion of the month of November and for good reason. Like, can you see that glow? Like, really? Can you see that glow? This is beautiful. This is a more um, powdery, it's a more powdered version highlight with no glitter. Um, I like this for the days where I don't want to have big glitter flecks on my face. This doesn't have glitter flecks in it. It's very um, finely milled. So I love Rodeo Drive by Ofra. Um, and then I have the Master Chrome Face Studio Metallic Highlighter in Molten Gold. Um, this one is a bam in your face. Okay. Um, it's so buttery, you guys. Like, 
like it's it's very very um intense so that is molten gold looks beautiful i mean if i had a spotlight on me it would look even more intense but unfortunately i don't right now um but it's so pretty like i can't even describe it i think this is the one that i'm gonna bring with me when i go away next year because it is just so dang gorgeous so gorgeous so gorgeous like wow gorgeous i can't stop staring at it um drugstore 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 if you guys don't want to spend an arm and a leg on a highlighter for high end just get the master chrome one by maybelline this is beautiful love it and it's like i think 10 bucks so my powder for the month and i have been using this now for about two months now is my rimmel stay matte uh an oldie but a goodie i go back to this every now and then because i just love this powder it's finely milled and um it just it sets the foundation without without you looking cakey i'm wearing it today um, I wish they had a better color range because they don't have a the best color range um, But I find that the nude beige is the one I use it does the job for me and it sets my foundation well, so um, You know my niece asked me what's a good powder that I can afford I brought her to Rimmel stay matte because this is a great one So if you guys are looking for a powder that to keep you matte check out the Rimmel stay matte. It's a great great option Okay, so I am going into skincare now. Um, I am going to start with body care. So you guys know that in the wintertime, my, you know, I don't know about you, but my skin gets super dry. My body skin gets super dry. Um, I, you know, I use a lot of lotion or body butters and body creams in the winter than I do in the summer, only because summertime I use lighter lotions and I don't lotion every day because I find that it makes me a little bit too, like, slippery. Not really greasy, but slippery because of the heat. Um... So I'm using, you know, body creams and butters and lotions and, you know, all that jazz more so in the winter time, just because my skin gets drier. The one I have been enjoying is the Bath & Body Works Shea Coconut, Richly Nourishing Whipped Body Butter. This is the Cocoa Butter, Shea Butter, and Coconut Oil. This is the 8 ounce one. Um, this is part of their newer line from the summertime that they they came out with and they still have it in store so if you guys want to go check it out definitely go check it out they have a coconut one a honey vanilla one or honey something and then they have another one i can't remember what it's called but oh it smells like coconuts this is like so rich it's you can tell like i'm almost done i'm at the bottom um love this stuff this is one of my favorite body creams of all time um I just have no words for this. It's affordable. It's at Bath and Body Works. Get your coupons. This is great. I love it. If you guys can't, you know, you don't have the money to spend on the Rio de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream or the Laura Mercier um, Apricot Vanilla Body Butters, because those are phenomenal, um, or even the Laura Mercier Body Milks or the Body Cream, the Coconut uh, Almond Body Cream, that's phenomenal as well. Those are all really, really expensive. If you use a Bath and Body Works coupon, you can definitely get a discount on these and you can spend under... 20 bucks on these so they're much cheaper than the other high-end ones that I was talking about so um, love it it hydrates I find when I use this I I feel hydrated the next morning I'll slather this all over my body at night and then in the morning I'm my skin is not feeling like super dry um, okay so I have a couple of masks and I have a toner um, the Lush Tea Tree Water is my favorite toner pretty much of all time just to keep my acne at bay. Um, at night when I finish masking and I, you know, cleansing my face and masking all that jazz, I will go in with this and douse my face and my chest with it and it just gives me some extra water hydration plus it also gives me, um, you know, the tea tree aspect of keeping my breakouts from, you know, creeping up. And uh, I love it. I got the big bottle this time, so I do have a little, quite a bit in there, but I have been using this. Um, it is a little on the expensive side, so you can definitely make your own by, you know, using distilled water and adding a few drops of tea tree, wa uh, tea tree water, sorry, tea tree oil in there and just shaking it up. Um, and maybe even squeezing a little bit of lemon in there too. Um, so this is definitely a favorite of mine, and it's been an oldie but a goodie as well. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> The scrub that I have always loved, it's a tried and true, is my Ole Henriksen Walnut Complexion Scrub. This is an old packaging. Um, they've now rechanged the packaging into a squeezy tube, but I'm on the very midst end of the of the old packaging one that I have. 
I love this stuff. It's so, so hydrating on the skin. I just enjoy it. It definitely exfoliates gently and leaves your skin feeling baby soft. So um, I just find that I really love this. I really do enjoy it. I feel like it's very luxurious and a treat for my skin. Um, I don't even know. Does it have any ingredients on here? Maybe on the peel if you peel the inside, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I just, I really do enjoy it. It is a, a favorite. I do have plenty of backups of this in the new packaged version because I just cannot live without this product. Um, I have two masks and then I'm going to talk about some moisturizers and sunscreen. So the first mask I have been enjoying is my 3D volumizing mask, The Needles No More by Dr. Brandt. This is a uh, deluxe size sample. I finished a deluxe size sample of this and you will see that in my empties. This is my backup. I have a couple of these laying around and I have a full size. So um, I do notice a difference. This is supposed to soften any fine lines or creasing that you may have in and around your facial area. Um, I have been using this on my laughing lines and in between my brows, like where I frown. And then I've been using it very lightly around my corner of the eye where there, you can potentially get crow's feet. Um, and I find that my laughing lines have definitely gotten softer from when I started using this. So I think it does do something, but it's not a significant, significant difference. It, it's, it's more like a soft, subtle change. And um, I have been enjoying it. I personally think that if you are interested in trying it, try to get a sample of it, like a sample like this size, and use it and see if you notice a difference in your skin. And then look at TJ Maxx for the full size because that's where I bought my full size. And this baby in full size is definitely not cheap. It's like $110 for like a 1.5 or 1.7 fluid ounce. And um, I found mine at TJ Maxx for 35 bucks or so. So definitely worth a check at TJ Maxx. So have been loving this and I do have backups. It is a good product. Um, my last mask, and you know, because I talk about hydration and it getting colder, my Glam Glow thirsty mud treatment. So I have been using this, um, almost every night as a, you know, 15 minute, 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour mask, just to kind of give me some extra hydration on the face. It smells like coconuts, which is amazing. Um, I love this. I, I find that, okay. Some people will use this as a sleeping mask. I can't because I find that in the morning I'll wake up with minor whiteheads on my face. So this one I cannot use as a sleeping mask overnight. I like to use this as like a half an hour treatment and then like rinse it off. Um, and it, it gives me some decent hydration. Um, you just have to be careful. Like if you are going to try it as an overnight mask, I would definitely test it in, a, in an area first where you're susceptible to breakouts to see if you will break out before you slather it all over your face. Um, it's very tropical, very coconutty scent, very luxurious. Um, I, I suggest using this between 15 to 30 minutes at a time and then rinsing it off nightly. Um, I don't really suggest using it as an overnight mask because even though they say you can use it overnight, it's not really made for overnight treatment. Nowhere on here says it's an overnight treatment. So I wouldn't use it as an overnight treatment per se. I tried it. It didn't work for me. If you have similar skin, whether it's dry or acne prone or sensitive, I would just, just be wary of that. Um, it has been a favorite of mine and continues to be a favorite of mine. It's a very expensive like product, but once I finish this, I don't know if I'll repurchase it right away only because I do have some Japanese Korean hydrating masks that I like way more than this. I know, I know I'm sorry, but it's still, it's been an oldie, but a goodie to me. And I still do enjoy it when I do have it in stock at my house. So thumbs up for Glam Glow Thirsty Mud. Um, okay. So I have two moisturizers. This is my daytime moisturizer, the Tarte Drink of H2O Hydrating Boost. This stuff is phenomenal for during the day underneath makeup. It is a gel type formula. It smells great. So there probably is fragrance. Um, a lot of dermatologists will tell you to stay away from fragrance related products. Personally, for me, I, I can't, I just, you know, I try things. It's, it's my, it's my passion, whether they're fragrance free or not. I will try it anyways, just to see how it reacts on my skin. Um, but this is gorgeous on my skin. It soaks into the skin so nicely. doesn't leave any residue. It's great. Um, it's a great base to put on top of, um, it leaves a great base to put my sunscreen on top is what I want to say. So I put my sunscreen on top of this and it just does amazing things. So, um, 
I do love this. I do enjoy it. It's got plankton and a hyaluronic acid in it, which is great. Um, so if you guys are interested, definitely check out the Tarte Hydrating Moisturizer because it is a nice one. I think oily girls will definitely like this more because it does give the hydration without making you greasy. Um, if you're really super dry, you might not like this because it's a gel formula. So it'll soak right away into the skin and, you know, you'll have to put on another moisturizer on top. Um, personally for me, I'm, you know, oil, oily to dry. So I'm oiling the T-zone and dry everywhere else. This works fine for me. I enjoy it. It does the job and I find that it's very nice to use and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect my skin in a bad way in any way. So thumbs up for that. My nighttime moisturizer I have been using is the Beyond Belief Nourish and Diminish Night Richly Moisturizer with Vitamin C um, and Skin Nutrients. This is a two ounce uh, jar. Got this on sale for like 10 bucks. Sorry, $8.39. The reduced price is at the bottom. And I find that it is amazing. I bought two of these. One I gave to my mom and one I kept. And I'm telling you, it leaves my skin so soft. It's got dimethicone in it. It's got glycerin in it, which is what makes your skin so smooth. Um, but it is super, super nice. It's got vitamin C and E, which is great. Um, if you guys can find this, definitely check it out. It is amazing and it's affordable. I got mine at Sally's on reduced price, which is even better. So definitely look out at Sally's for this because this is a great, great option. And you don't have to break the bank for skincare. I'm, you know, I have... I have spent a lot of money on skincare over the years and, you know, whether it's high end or low end, and I've learned that there's, you don't have to break the bank for every little thing that you use for skincare. So, um, great moisturizer, thumbs up. Um, these two I like to combine. So here's my sunscreen and my coconut smoothing priming moisturizer by the, uh, first aid beauty. Um, sometimes I will use just this. Sometimes I will use just this, but sometimes I will slap them together and mix them up. Um, the Clear Face Neutrogena 60 SPF is my absolute favorite sunscreen for the face. It's for acne prone skin, it's oil free and fragrance free, and it will not cause breakouts. Now, you might wonder, why will it not cause breakouts? I am pretty certain, I'm trying to find, there's dimethicone in here, which is great. I thought that there was going to be some sort of salicylic acid in here, and there's not. Um, Whatever is in here that is really helping with the, with the breaking out, because I find that greasy uh, sunscreens really clog my pores. I'm sorry. I don't care what dermatologist says that, um, you know, certain SPF sh it shouldn't break you out. It doesn't normally break you out. Anytime I wear a greasy SPF on my face, I will break out. It doesn't matter. This puppy has saved my skin on my face because I can use this on my skin and I will not break out. I will not get all... Um, you know, like red and pussy, um, with these like clog pore breakout type of things. Um, this is just amazing. I use this for the beach. I use this under my makeup. I have bought a backup of this because I want to take this with me to, um, when I go away in the, in the summer. So, you know, man, I have to say Neutrogena clear face. This is like a total win for me. As for my coconut smoothing priming moisturizer, I find that I use this in the summer and I use this now in the winter and this works better on my skin in the winter time. It does leave a little bit of a glow. So I find that because it does a little, does have a little bit of a glow, um, that's what it looks like. It just, I think the glow is nicer in the winter time because my skin is drier. So it doesn't make me look greasy. Does that make any sense? I'm actually wearing the two today, uh, the sunscreen and the moisturizer mixed together, um, underneath my makeup. And it just gives a little more of a, of a glowiness to the skin. Um, I don't know. I just, I really, I like it more in the winter time. This I wasn't a fan of in the summer. I like my Too Faced um, probiotic primer, like coconut primer. Um, in the summertime because it wasn't as greasy. This one I like more in the winter. It does have coconut fruit extract, apricot fruit extract, coffee seed extract, so it's got caffeine. It's got licorice root for brightening. Um, it does. It has titanium dioxide and iron oxides. So I'm wondering if it's got a little bit of SPF, but it doesn't really claim it, so I'm not really sure. Um... I don't know. I just like this this one in the winter time. That's just my opinion. Um, I find that this just makes my skin look more radiant in the winter because my skin is more drier. So it'll take in the glow a little better than it would in the summertime when I'm I'm a little bit more oilier. So I think this is great for 
more so for drier skin in the winter time. So if you have dry skin and you want to you want to make it look a little more radiant underneath your makeup, if you don't want to go and buy the um what's the MAC cream that makes you look radiant? I have it and I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me. Let me know down below if you guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't want to spend money on that, this one is, I think, a bit cheaper. I think it ranges for about 30 bucks or so. Um, and you do get more product than you do in the Too Faced one as well. This is a 1.7 fluid ounce, whereas the Too Faced one is 1.35 fluid ounce. Um, so you do get more product for less of a cost. Just saying. Um, this is great. Love it. Thumbs up. Okay, I spent 50 minutes on freaking showing you guys my, my favorites. I'm sorry. I'm so going to, like, speed this up and try to reduce it a bit. Thank you so much for staying with me here and um, staying till the end of this video. Um, I'm starting to touch all my swatches and I'm getting like makeup all over my hands. So I'm going to let you guys go. Don't forget to let me know down below if you've tried any of this. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye! Mwah.